Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. So for today's video, we are going to be keeping playing rapid chess games so I can keep improving my middle game plans as my last two videos I, I play my games, I am not very happy. So yeah, hopefully I can keep improving. Okay, let's start with d4. So my main opening and see what's going on. Okay, so we have a um, Nimzo type of setup and we are going to be playing g3. And now knight to f3. Okay, so we have the standard Catalan here where black takes a pawn right away. Okay, we are going to just castle. This line is very popular um, in probably a lot of levels, mainly because, I think mainly because it's probably very simple to play. Uh, but for me, it's fairly pleasant because it gets me to an end game where I am just better. So, so far is this all theory. I've had this probably a few times uh, over the board already, so yep. Let's say our opponent knows theory very well. Now let's see what we, what are we going to do? Okay. So this is kind of a story moment where it's kind of a little bit different here. So knight b three. I can play knight b three. That's all I've been playing, right? At the very least. And, uh, I think I'm playing it, you know, because why not? Because it opens up the, the, the bishop. And of course, I don't want to go bishop e3. That is not very ideal. I don't also don't think bishop g6 is, or b6, sorry, is a great move. I think I don't have to go, um, yeah, bishop e7 is a theory move. I don't think bishop b6 is such a good move by any chance. Now, since bishop e7 is play, I can play knight d4. Um, I mean, either case, I could play knight d4 here. And, or I could play bishop g5, but what is the point or is also somewhat of a move but it runs to knight d5 which i kind of don't like so i am going to play uh knight to knight f to d4 opening up this bishop diagonal and then let's see Uh, camera a little bit so less lighting on the top and also we are potentially trying to push e4 as well um, and you know the plan here is that we are trying to get the center although it will it may Block this bishop diagonal as well. Although, if black plays rook b8, then now e4 makes a lot of sense because rook b8, the whole point is to play, trying to play um, b6 and then bishop b7. Because now, because now, after knight takes and pawn takes, e5 isn't really a good move anymore. So let's see. I don't think that knight takes d4 was a good move. I think, yeah, I think bishop d7 
uh, was a move here. Going back here, I think bishop d7 was a move because ap then after knight takes and bishop takes, bishop takes, pawn takes, and now now this is um, now black is fine because the bad bishop is out of the pawn out of the pawn chain. So we have rook d8, which of course is completely fine. Now knight d5 is of course a very a very common idea here. We have to also be aware of e5. That could be a potential candidate move. So now the plan is do we want to play rook b1 and try our best to attack? The b7 pawn, or do you not want to? Now, knight a5, what is stopping us? Knight a5, what I'm afraid of, at the very least, is e5. Now, knight a5, of course, can also be stopped with knight to d5, but... But then after rook b1, I'm not sure. If knight a5, if knight d5, we can play rook b1, and then if black plays rook b8, then we can actually capture the knight. And after rook, if rook takes, we can play bishop f4, and now we are um, attacking the rook. Even though our knight is hanging, it doesn't really matter. Uh, black can play bishop d6 here, but... That runs straight into e4, and I don't think that's good for black. So I think after knight a5, e5 is probably the candidate move here. Actually, although knight a5, he could just play bishop. He just play rook b8. Well, but rook b8, I just play rook b1, right? And I don't think there's anything going on here. And because now he can't play b6 anymore. Knight a5, e5, knight, knight takes b7 isn't, it's okay, I guess. Yeah, but then I just give the, I just give this pawn for, I don't know, reason. Sure, I get the bishop pair if he takes. Um, But is that really what I wanted? Right? I could, of course, play this, and after e5, maybe I could play this and start applying pressure. But again, there's also e4, e4 ideas. Maybe not a5, e5, no, bishop g5. This is so good. Maybe I could play, uh, no, I, can I play d5? I'm not sure. Maybe. Actually, yeah, I could, right? Because then I could threaten an e4, and now I have a pass pawn. Play knight a5. Kind of like I kind of like the move a lot. Bishop b4. That's a move. That's a move that I should have calculated as well. But then knight takes. Um, it's. Fine, I guess. Sure, I give the pawn. But then here, the bishop pair is... Oh, actually, wait. This is actually not so clear. Huh, wait a second. Bishop b4 takes... If I take, then after this, then my rook is trapped. Wait a second. Uh-huh. If I go here... There's a way I can get out of this. I could play rook b1, and after rook takes, I could play a3. Um, but after a5, a takes, pawn takes... Now this has become a little bit unclear as to what I actually want to do.
Hmm, this is very. It's actually harder to think about. Maybe I was attacking too early. The hard part about this end game is that it's equal, and to force something to happen is actually not easy at all. Okay, he finds it. Uh, hmm. Well, our opponent finds it, so. But over here, I can actually play uh, Bishop D2, funnily enough. Right? Bishop D2, he actually can't take on D4 because after Bishop takes B4 and Rook takes B4, I have Rook, e, I have rook D8 checkmate. And my, my knight, then now I have the Bishop pair, and I'm happy. Yeah, I think I will play this. Yeah, I think e5 probably is a move here. The The problem with this for black is that the light square bishop is very bad. And what black needs to do is to get this bishop out as soon as possible. Because once black gets this bishop out and connect the rooks, then everything will be fine. And I'm trying to basically apply the pressure there. Again, okay, rook d4 doesn't really work. It actually doesn't work. I, I wasn't really considering this move until I started calculating. So I'm glad that it worked out. Because now if bishop takes and rook takes, I am still attacking this pawn. And sure, black can play rook b8, but black then can never play b6 because I, I have knight c6 now. And now I can just play e4. Well, actually, no, I don't play e4. Rook b8, I can just play um, rook to b1. And now this pawn is being tremendously pressured. And it is not very good for, for black. So I guess now, after all of that, then bishop b4 is actually an inaccuracy. Or maybe a mistake. Yep. I'll just take... Of course, knight d5 now is actually a much better move to make. But now I can just play e4. And, and now, like, e5 isn't actually such... Okay, so... On here, place knight d5. Now I have to ask myself what happens after e4, right? So the knight has these squares to go to. Knight b6 is not a move. Eliminate that because that just blocks the b6 pawn, and I don't think that's a good move at all. Um, knight b4, potential a potential move. Um, but I think that just runs to d5. Maybe. I see three. I don't think it's similar to before, but it is kind of just worse in a way. Uh knight f6. That kind of just looks a little bit silly. But that's actually maybe a good maybe a good move. I really like e4 here. So I think I'm going to play. Now, and now my position is actually really pleasant because now after e5, I can just play d5 and now I have a pleasant pass pawn, protected pass pawn. Now I need, but now what I need to do is calculate with the plan whether I will play d5 or not. Because d5 is actually quite a committal move that I have to think about. So.
I think knight b4 is actually a, a fine move. Purely be Okay, play knight e7. I think it kind of does the same purpose because uh, knight c6 is actually a pretty good move here that we may want to play. Also, because of this, now if I play rook b1, black can play b6. And there's no knight c6 anymore. But I think the whole point of kicking the knight is that we can play rook to c1. On after b6, what do we do? This is probably the question that I would want to ask. Um, I think there are tactics involved if I play rook c1. Rook c1, if he plays b6, right? Then we can play e5, and he, he play rook b8, but it's rook b8, rook b8, then I just play knight c4, knight d6. Oh, well, knight c4, knight d6, we just do that. Right. But do I play d5 here? I can play d5, but capture captures, and now bishop, this bishop is out, and this pawn... Hard, it's hard to say whether it's actually going far or not. I think I'm going to play rook c1. I will check with the engine after, right, to see if d5 is a good committal move or not. I don't think e5, I don't think b6, I can, I think e, b, after b6, e5 is a good move. Because d5 is so strong. It's so strong that um, I don't think it's worth it to go e5 and then leave a backwards pawn in the center like this. I think maybe after b6, I just go knight b3. Um, and allow bishop b7. And also after bishop b7, we have rook c7. And the point of knight c3, knight b3 here is now I can actually move the the other rook, right? Because d4 is now protected, so I'm I don't have to be afraid anymore. Like this is equal, but this is very hard for black to play. It is it is uh, quite a clamp endgame for for black to play and um Black really has to know theory here. Cause because actually black can maybe sacrifice a couple of pawns or something. Okay, so black plays rook d7 trying to simply stop rook c7. And of course I can understand that. Um, hmm. But now, can we? We can go d five. But again, I don't. I don't think that's such a good move anymore. If knight b if I go knight b three, why can just go b black can just go b six, right? And now the question is a little odd, being like, well, what am I doing, right? What like what is my knight doing over here? Uh, I think I. B3. I have another plan in mind here. And Black would definitely play B6. But now I'm but if Black plays B6, now I'm going to play Bishop H3. And what I'm threatening is I'm threatening D5 now. Trying to apply pressure on E6. 
And the fact that actually now the fact now I look at it, the fact that I play knight b three protects the rook. Huh. It's interesting. I didn't realize that. So now I can actually comfortably take on e6 too. So after bishop e a if b6 bishop h3 go with the plan, right? Then d5 becomes a real threat because I can actually capture this. So now let's let's play bishop h3. And if the rook moves off uh, the seventh rank, like say rook d6, and now we play rook c7. Because now I don't think this this bishop does much on this diagonal anymore because it's just gonna get con contested, right? So we can just block it off with f3 or something, or we, we just play d5 and we protect it and we block it off. I mean, also bishop b7, d5, probably black could play um, rook a to d8, but we can just move, slide the rook over because, again, this is a pin. This is a pin that black needs to play around. So, hey, f5. f5. Very committal move there. Uh Okay, I don't have much time. D5. Yeah, take 6 and this isn't so clear. All right, let's let's take. Definitely has to take with the pawn, unless I don't know, unless this guy's like kind of cheating or something, where he's just like waiting and waiting. Then bishop g two, just bishop b seven. I don't think that that does anything in particular. So I am going to play um, bishop to f1 instead. And what I'm going to do is to move this bishop off this diagonal where it is slightly better. So now let's play this. And now let's force this rook off the seventh rank. And he can't play rook d5 because now I have bishop c4. Right? And then once he moves off the off the rank, now I have uh, a rook c7, a very de devastating threat. I think bishop b7 is a blunder from my bishop f1 move. So. Okay, now I just play, this should work. And there's actually no real checkmate, so oh bishop there. Oh that's a nice move. Um It's a pretty nice move actually. Now uh, here if bishop d five Huh Wait, I don't have much time. Here. Let's play this. I'm trying to make him calculate tactics as much as possible here. Okay. Now let's play a four. Okay. Um, let's play this.
Not good, but not much we can do, I don't think. Uh Okay, let's let's just play this. Let's see. Yeah, it seems very dangerous, but I guess I could have play also play King H3, King F3 because there's actually no checks. Now I'm winning. Because now I'm I'm attacking F5 as well. So he can't and he has to trade one one of the rooks to, to stop this. So So now I'm just completely winning. Alright. And now he has to go rook c4 to protect this, and now I'm just gonna win. Alright. Very nice game. Definitely play a little bit better since I know the opening. The open Catalan is uh, never, never easy to play. And yeah, okay, let's go ahead and analyze this. Okay, yeah, so here d5 is a good move. And so what happens after the captures? And bishop b7. Okay, I can just go d6. Ah, oh. after trading. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, wow. I take this sack. Oh, now, now when this is already protected. Oh. Eh. And he can't, oh, he can't go knight c6. He can't go knight d5 either. Oh, that's why this is good. Because now knight b again, I said this earlier, right? Knight b3 protects a d2 rook, which allows all these tactics to work out. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's that that's so then that's a bad move. Yeah, because I think they definitely will take. And but then after knight g6, right? Just this and rook b8. Or I guess the other way. The other way is probably more likely because knight f5. But then you just sacrifice a pawn to create a, a, a pin here. Rook d6, you get it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, just take. Because if you go rook d6 and you go here, that's just cheating. So, knight d6, rook here, and there's no way out. Wow. But a, let's say, go knight g6. Yeah, now I have an overwhelming advantage with this. So f five was another mistake, and okay, so I underestimate e five by a whole lot. So this is actually better for black. What if rook d six? Oh, now you go knight d four, and now this knight is active and it's protecting as well. This knight is now sitting here. On one of the best squares ever, and yeah, and oh, you can't go here because now rook t7. Tactics, tactics. But I was actually better the whole game. Where did I make a blunder? Oh. Oh, there, oh yeah, that was equal. Wait. No, that was blunder from black. Where did I blunder? Oh, here. Oh, so I was playing so correctly, though. Did I? Yeah, knight knight d five or e five. But bishop b four allows bishop b two. 
So e4. So here d5 is already really good. Take six and knight c6. You don't care, you just go back. Uh I was a little like and the point here, knight c6 again, because you can't move the bishop. You just do, you move here, you just lose a pawn. So, um, so knight c6, knight c4. And now, oh, now knight c4 protects the rook. So now black has to deal with it first. And black actually doesn't have any good knight moves. Like knight b4, I just go rook b1. And a5, I just go a3. Yeah, bishop f5 is a potential move, but yeah, just rook bd1. Rook b2, rook b3 is also winning, just straight up winning, because you just win a pawn here. So, but rook d1, you just, rook d1 plays on the pass pawn. Rook b2, knight d3, just take this, and you're still completely winning. Okay. So rook d7 was very bad. Yeah, because it allowed d5, but I played very passive. But okay, uh, I think overall that was a really, really nice game. So, yeah, I think here it was just like really bad for our opponent. Okay, King H3 was actually one the best move. I just have to understand that it's actually safe. Yeah, because King F3, you just expose yourself out of this and also allows this thing, which is not the best, you know. Yeah. And now here it's actually, it's a plus one, but it's uh, so unclear. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.